So recently I got my new laptop and I'm just blown away by it. Its performance is great. I love the form factor, the keyboard is amazing, and the screen is probably the nicest display I've ever had. Originally I wanted to make this video a review on the Asus ROG Zephyrus G15, but there are already videos out there talking about this laptop. And they did a much better job than what I could do when it comes to a review. So today I want to do something a bit different. In general, when people talk about a laptop or when they review one, they will make some comparisons to other laptops within a similar pricing tier, but then they go back to talking about the laptop and all of its features. In today's video, all I want to do is talk about the head-to-head -head comparisons of different laptops against this one. Before we get into that, I just gotta say that if you do end up enjoying the video, to so please hit that like button. It helps this video get out to more people. Also, if you like seeing this kind of content or you just wanna see some more tech content in general, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Finally, if you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave those down in the comment section below. I would love to answer any questions you guys might have. Now let's get to the video. So first, before we can start making comparisons to other laptops, you guys need to know what laptop mine even is. The Asus ROG G15 model that I got came with a Ryzen 9 5900HS and an RTX 3070. It has a 1440p display with a 165Hz refresh rate, 16GB of RAM, half of which is soldered onto the board, and a 1TB NVMe SSD with another M.2 slot open for another drive. It has an HDMI port, an RJ45 connector for Ethernet, two USB Type-A ports, two USB Type-C ports that support 100 watt charging and display port out, a micro SD card reader, and finally a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. All this came together for $1,850 USD from Best Buy. Now if you want to see a real review on this laptop and all of its internals and all the testing, there is going to be a video linked down in the description. The first major comparison that I wanted to make is against the laptop I was considering the most to get instead of the G15. The Razorblade 14 came out about a couple weeks or so ago, and right when it launched I was very intrigued by it. First off, it had an AMD 5900HX in it, which is similar to the CPU in the G15, but the 5900HS in the G15 has a lower power allotment and cannot overclock. Now I know that I wanted an AMD CPU because of a couple of reasons. One, AMD CPUs are generally cheaper and offer more performance than Intel CPUs. Second is because of their Vega graphics. One of the things that most modern laptops do that have a discrete GPU is once you unplug it from a power source, the system will disable the dedicated GPU, in my case, the 3070, and switch over to the integrated graphics. This helps save a ton of power while on battery, and typically when you're on battery power, you aren't going to be gaming, so there usually isn't a high necessity for your dedicated GPU. Intel, for the most part, has a very inferior set of integrated graphics compared to the Vega graphics that AMD CPUs have. Sometimes manufacturers just won't switch between the discrete graphics and the integrated ones because of the marginal performance of the Intel UHD graphics, which for the most part results in worse battery performance. Other than the fact that the new Razorblade 14 had an AMD CPU, another thing that interested me was its form factor. Now I'm not someone who is a huge freak when it comes to form factor, I have fairly large hands, so having a larger laptop honestly works out better for me most of the time, but I did want something thin that I could throw into my backpack to take to class with little to no effort effort, and that would have been something that the Blade 14 would have done great. Sadly though, there wasn't much else that the Blade 14 had that was much better than what the G15 had. The Blade 14 at $1800 only had a 1080p screen at 144Hz at a 3060 instead of a 3070. It only had one M.2 slot which is already being used. All the memory is soldered on so there is no option for expansion, and it didn't have an SD card reader which I've been using a lot on my G15. In general, for the $50 more that I paid for the G15, I was getting way more than what I would have gotten with the Blade 14. Okay, so it looks like Razer had a fairly competitive laptop, so what could have competed with the G15 even better? Well, the Asus ROG Zephyrus M16 looked like some pretty good competition. The Asus ROG Zephyrus M16 came in at the same price within the general same build as the G15, except instead of a 15.6 inch display, the M16, as you might have guessed, had a 16 inch display. The screen itself has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, but it has the same overall screen spec as the G15. The M16 also has a webcam, which is something that the G series of ROG notebooks haven't had at all. And the M16 also has a downgraded GPU sporting a 3060 instead of a 3070. And one of, if not the biggest changes is that instead of an AMD Ryzen 9 CPU, it comes with an Intel 11th gen Core i9. I had to break out a paper and pencil to make 
a pros and cons list for those laptops to see which one was the better one for me. What it came down to is the fact that even though the i9 did perform better in some tasks compared to the Ryzen 9, it sucked down more power to do so, which in turn gave the M16 worse battery life and overall noise levels than the G15. The M16 also had a worse GPU, and for 1440p gaming, I think that the mobile version of the 3070 is probably the lowest end that you would want to have, and the extra 2GB of VRAM helps me when it comes to rendering videos. Now the last top that I was considering was getting the Gigabyte Aero 15. For $1,600, you're getting an 11th gen Core i7, which is around the same performance level as the 5900HS. It also has an RTX 3060, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and a 4K OLED display. In all honesty, I was pretty much set on grabbing this laptop. It had all the ports that I wanted with a full size SD card reader. Sure, the GPU was a bit underpowered, but it did have a better screen and it was $250 cheaper. What made me not like this nearly as much as the G15 was when I went into the store to take a look at it. I'd already known the look and feel of the G15 beforehand, but this thing just didn't look or feel nearly as nice. I wasn't the biggest fan of the keyboard, the key travel seemed a bit shallow, the touchpad was fine, but it was really small compared to the one on the G15, and the fingerprint reader took up pretty much the entire top left portion of the trackpad, and for someone with big hands and fingers, it just kind of felt cramped to me. When it comes to looks, sure, I think some people will like it more than others, but I think that Asus has nailed the line of still having kind of a gamer vibe, while also being discreet enough to bring it into a business meeting and not looking like an absolute weeb. <laughs> now, I don't think that, that the air 15 is as bad as other gaming companies for making laptops you know scream gamer but it's just still not as subtle as the g15 and when it came down to it the main reason i didn't get the aero 15 was the personal feel i didn't get the same smile as i did testing out the aero 15 as i did with the g15 again that was relegated to using the aero 15 in the shop but even though i have my g15 right now and paid 250 more dollars over the aero 15 i have not regretted my decision for a single moment i've had no problems this laptop i love writing on it the screen is fantastic and i love the way it looks also as i'm writing the script i've read some reports of the aero 15 having some wi-fi problems so i guess i dodged a bullet there I think that Asus and AMD were a match made in heaven. Asus is a company focused on making great products and genuinely listens to reviewers and customers about changes that they should make to their products, and that is reflected in their design. AMD is a company that has been making some of the best laptop CPUs on the market for both price and performance. As you guys saw, it's not just Asus's design that is making this laptop great. It's also the fact that they are using AMD. You guys saw that they made the M16 to be pretty much the same thing as the G15, but it falls short because they're using a more expensive Intel CPU. The literal title of Dave2D's review of the M16 is the cost of using Intel. I hope that Asus keeps on cranking out their G-Series laptops because these things are just absolute beasts. They have amazing performance that kills any other premium laptop at their price and is a solid recommendation for me to anyone in my audience. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. It helps me out a lot. And if you guys want to help the channel out further, you guys can hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure that if you guys have any questions to leave those down in the comment section below, and I'll try to get back to you guys as soon as possible. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.